Ah, uh, we this is Spider Man issue forty nine from the nineties. This is that one that I have been reviewing. Uh, the one that comes just before the Clone Saga with Obgobbler and Demon Gobbler and Hunter Man's Son. And this one, it introduces a new villainess that will gun down in history as one of the most important Marvel characters of all time. She is called Cold Blood. And she has got... No, wait, she's called Cold Heart. <laughs> that was genuinely one of the few times I didn't mean to get a character's name wrong. Yeah, this bitch, she never appears again after this issue. And Obgobbler is on the cover too, because I didn't think anyone would just buy an issue because Cold, Blood, Cold Heart is on the cover. This is going to be hard. Cold Blood is a much better name for her. As I have said in the past issues, the art is solid and at times good. It's nothing flashy, but it more than does the job. And the writing... The writing is again what it needs to be. There is no deep introspection or intellectual bent of things. This is just classic superhero action comics. Spider-Man, he fights a baddie, that sort of stuff. And I'm all for that. Not every story needs to be Spider-Man's last hunt. Although that is an appropriate comparison since... This is one of the many Spider-Man stories that follow up on that classic. And despite having no real cerebral depth, this is probably the second best follow-up to Spider-Man's last on. Spider-Man, he stops a mugging, but this is actually during the whole grim dark period just before the clone saga with Spider-Man decided to quit being Peter Parker and just be Spider-Man and refer to himself as The Spider. It wasn't great, but this book doesn't deserve the blame for following the lead of the main Spider-Man book. I will say, quite cleverly, uh, they started this runoff setting up this idea that Spider-Man, he was getting really annoyed and angry about how all his enemies, they just keep coming back again and again. And here they use that to feed into the whole, I am the spider rubbish. Our here we have got Cole's heart and she is getting dressed and her story is that she is depressed. Really, that is it. And she just happens to have a magic suit of armour as well as two magic swords that freeze things. She was in some nondescript military and she got discharged because she was depressed. And because she is depressed she has now become cold blood to gun and kill superheroes. Uh, there's a good reason she has never appeared again. It's a shame because when it comes down to it, Spider-Man, he is really lacking in the having female villains department. Then we have got Obgobbler, and this is this is a great splash page image of him. He has had his strength enhanced using notes from Hunter Man's journals, and this scene is a bit rubbish. Obgobbler. He has finally gotten superpowers like he has always wanted. And the first thing he's going to do with them is gun and harass his never before seen or mentioned ex-wife and manhandle a new fella. This really makes Obgobler look like a pathetic loser after all the good things that this creative team had done towards the character in the previous issues. And he apparently takes them hostage and Spider-Man quickly shows up. There definitely seems to be plot missing between these pages. And Cold Heart, she is waiting and watching. Meanwhile, off in Russia, we get back to Hunter Man's son. And he opts to undergo the same experimental process that they tested on Obgobbler. So that he too can have his strength enhanced. And then he can follow in his father's footsteps. I do think there's maybe 
too many things going on in this issue. We've got like three villains. Uh, we have got Spider Man being Morty, and and this bit is bad. Spider Man he confronts Hobgoblin, but then he just forgets he's in the middle of a scene, and he starts having random melodramatic soliloquies, which end with him punching a mirror, and then Cold Heart shows up, and the plot and the plotting makes no sense. Sadly, it's it's like we've got all the characters together in this scene, but they keep forgetting they are part of the scene. Like Spider-Man, he just forgot Hobgobbler was there the page before, and then at the start of this page. And then Cold Blood, she just shows up, and it's still like Hobgobbler. He isn't in this scene, and his hostages, they, they aren't there. And then Obgobler, he's on the next page, and he straight away escapes. But then, why did he start a hostage situation that went on long enough for the police and Spider-Man to respond, when he could have just left like this earlier? And called her, she ate Spider-Man. Personally, if I did this, I would have kept the Obgobler stuff as a subplot in this one. Uh, maybe never have Spider-Man cross paths with him. And instead gone with this Cold Heart stuff. Uh, this bit here, with him and her fighting, th this, is, this is fine. Uh, we have got some heavy-handed exposition about how Cold Heart's depression and stuff... Is because something happened with her son. And she is taking it out on Spider-Man. And then Obgobbler, who just escaped, he is straight away confronted by Spider-Man. Some more of that wonky plotting. Spider-Man just finds him. He seems to know where he is. So him and Hobgobbler, they fight. Uh, by the way, we are done with Cold Blood now. Uh, well, she appears in three more panels. Uh, and a kid asks her not to kill Spider-Man, so she doesn't. That is like her story arc complete. This character makes no sense. She was meant to be hunting the Hobgobbler, but then got distracted and apparently had it out for Spider-Man. And now it's just over. She never appears again, and based on this, with good reason. But then... You can also ask why she doesn't gun after Hobgobbler again. Like, after this, why isn't she not pursuing Hobgobbler? Uh, there is. <laughs> there is an unintentionally funny bit here where Spider-Man, he is thinking how both Hobgobbler and Coldheart, they will eventually come back to plague him anew, like all the other villains do. Well, Coldheart never does. And we end with some setup. Look... There's, there's Ben Reilly, and he's on a motor bicycle, and he's coming to New York land. And then out here, we're back with Hunter Man's son, the Dim Hunter, that is what he is called. And he is going to New York land too, to get revenge on Spider-Man for his father's death. Before we end though, we have got, right at the back here, we have got a fold-out advert for one of my favourite excellent men crossovers, Ball Covenant. I need to start reviewing this one. It's great. Emma Foster's is in it a lot. I was quite positive towards the issues that preceded this one, but this one is a mess. It's not unreadable. It's just if you look at it with a magnifying glass or you think about it, the story is not put together very well. I do think the problem is they have unsuccessfully tried mixing too many things. Maybe, maybe Cold Heart, she wouldn't be so pointless if you devoted a whole issue to her, made her a serious threat or explored her backstory, uh, rather than juggling her alongside stuff with Obgobbler. And then Obgobbler, he's just meant to have had a power upgrade. It would make sense to focus on that and show him as being a bigger obstacle for Spider-Man now, rather than having him quite quickly beaten by Spider-Man again. If anything, this botches almost every idea in it. It is a shame, but I still rate it seven thumbs up.
Apologies to all the fans who expect me to be 100% confident on all Marvel continuity. Cold Heart, she has one other appearance right at the start of Civil Wiles number one. That's her there. And she is one of the Villians who get exploded.